guys, it's Josh with SoutheastPitReport.com, and I'm hanging out here with Brock from 36 Crazy Fist. How you doing today, Brock? I'm good, man. Thanks. All right, so give our readers just a little brief history about you guys. Um, I've known about you for a long time. Introduce yourself and what you do in the band. Yeah, my name is Brock Lindo. I sing in the band 36 Crazy Fists, and uh, we started in 1994 in Anchorage, Alaska. Approaching our 21st year, uh, just put out our eighth album. Um, had a few cassettes come out in the mid '90s. Uh, you know, we we've lived, you know, for a better part of our career, kind of in the underground, you know, uh, metal rock scene. Uh, this year, in particular, on uh, our newest album, we've gotten some opportunities to to travel with uh, active rock radio bands, which yeah. we hadn't really done in the past, which has been a wonderful opportunity for us. So. Uh, you know, we've just been uh, spending a good portion of our career overseas. Uh, it's always been a little better for us over there. And, uh, yeah, we've had a wonderful ride, man. It's, uh, like I said, we're approaching our 21st year, and uh, it's good to still be rocking. Yeah, speaking of the name, 36 Crazy Fists, where, on, where in the world did that come from? Um, every time I hear it, um, especially since Disturbed put out their, their, their song 10,000 Fists, I always think of you guys when I hear that song because of the oh, yeah. name. But where did the name 36 Crazy Fists come from? Uh, it's Jackie Chan's very first film. Very first the film. The film was called Jackie Chan and the 36 Crazy Fists. Nice. So Being martial arts fans, we just, uh, silly name that stuck for a long time. All right, well, since you're a martial arts fan, um, and this is kind of random, I didn't know this until, until just now, if Jackie Chan was to get in a fight with Jet Li, who would win? Oh, Jackie, for sure. Oh, come on now, really? No, if you would have said Bruce Lee... I would have gave it to Bruce, but Jet Li, nah, he can't battle. He can't battle Jackie. All right, cool. So you guys are from Anchorage, Alaska. Yep. You're currently in South Carolina right now on the tour within this moment. Melting. Yes, it is scorching hot. You can probably see the sweat pouring down off my face uh, on camera. But, uh, you know, when people think of Anchorage, Alaska, they don't think of metal. And you just said to yourself that you guys are approaching your 21st year. What was it like trying to be a metal band in Anchorage, Alaska? Because when people think of Alaska, they definitely don't think of metal. They think of it being really cold. And for some reason, they think of Eskimos and penguins, despite the fact that penguins are not in Alaska. Right. Um, what was it like trying to be a metal band in Alaska? Well, I think as an outsider, as yourself, looking in on the state and not knowing all the, the little things about the state, uh, metal's king there. You know, oh yeah, I mean, we grew up on Bay Area Thrash, so Slayer, Metallic, Anthrax, T Testament, Megadeth, all those bands were our favorite bands growing up, like many people from my era, you know, our, our age. And uh, so the metal scene, the music scene in general is a very unique one where when I grew up, you would play with a death metal band and a folk band on the same night and it wouldn't be weird yeah like anywhere else and now to me that sounds very absurd but um back then no we didn't know any different and everybody was friends and the scene was very cool and it still is very cool it's probably one of the best locally supported scenes i've seen in the world and i think that's because well i know it's because national touring bands don't go there yeah uh, it's a one-off if they get brought by a promoter. Um, when I was growing up, Metallica and Ozzy came twice. Other than that, we didn't get any concerts. You yeah. know, there was some some concerts here and there, but um, so your local scene is the, they're the kings, and uh, so in that sense, it's very unique and very special. And when you when we go home and we play once or twice a year, it's a special event, man. Yeah. It's like I uh, I've been on tour with a lot of bands that. You know, we'll we'll be supporting them, and we'll go through their hometowns. You know, some days it's all right. Some bands it's great for, but where we're, when we come home to Alaska, I mean, it's it's a special deal. So uh, I've always felt very grateful for that, and that I think that it all breeds from isolation, being being separated from the states. You know, um, we're I know we're part of the the United States, but. We're we're damn near our own country out there. You know what it's I mean? Like Alaska. Yeah. So. Uh, or Hawaii, should I say? Not Alaska. Well, yeah, I know what you meant. Um, it, we're kind of we're on our own up there, even yeah. though we gotta live by the same laws as everybody else does here. Although, although marijuana is now legal up there, and hey. certain things like that are uh, we're we're following suit maybe earlier than some, but 
um, yeah, the music seems great there. And, and just to just to get back to your question, uh, um, the metal scene in general, and and even now the metal bands there. It's unfortunate that not more record labels are seeking out bands there because some of my friends that are in great bands up there, there's a great band called City and Ashes and a band called Decepticide and so a band called Griffith. There's so many cool metal bands there that the public don't know about yet, but if they had a chance to seek out, they, I, I guarantee they'd be into them. Nice. So it sounds to me like all these younger bands here in the continental U.S. that constantly complain about their scene on how people don't support their scene and stuff like that. They need to take note from those indie artists in Alaska, and it's because it sounds like that's a tight knit community that you guys have up well, there. Well, I think uh, I think absolutely, and it's a real big place on supporting your own. Yeah. Um, from local business to you know the oil and gas industry to the com commercial fishing industry, that's a lot of people's revenue that live there. You know what I mean? So people really get behind. I mean, we have uh, I think we have like eight NHL guys right now. And, man, those guys are heroes. And, uh, I mean, I think people that have done hard work and succeeded from Alaska, they're very celebrated. And, um, yeah, so if anybody wants to take note, take note about your local scene because it's, that's where it starts, man. Yeah. You know, and it's very, it's very cool when it's supported. Yeah, it's really sad a lot of times that you see, um, especially, like, the smaller shows, where you know you don't have a national act on there, things like that. It's just it, it, all it is is your local scene guys, and you have like particular people who will come out and pay fifteen, ten, fifteen dollars for a, a local show, and they're coming just to see one band. Like they, they hang right. out in the parking lot and they're you know talking with their friends or doing whatever while all these other great bands are playing, and they're yep. just coming to see that one band, and then they leave. Yeah, no, I mean that that could happen anywhere. So I I, I know that for sure. But uh, yeah, you're right, man. I mean. Uh, the cool thing about music is, and this is what I learned when I was like 13 years old or, you know, 13, 12, 13, 14, something like that, when I first really started seeing live shows, on any given night, man, some band might change your life. You know what I mean? And it, for me, it was Metallica Absolutely. originally. You know, I was into like Quiet Riot and Rat and Twisted Sister. And my, my older sister, who really turned me on to music, was into like Duran Duran and Cyndi Lauper and more of the punk type pop in excess synth type stuff. But when I heard Metallica, I was like, that floored me. And I was 87, 88, something like that. And Justice had just came out. Then I backlogged and checked out all the earlier stuff. And they've been my favorite band since then. And they're the reason I play in a band. Um, that was a, a very defining moment in my life through music that I just found something that I just gravitated towards. So anyway, getting back to like, you never know what you're going to see. You never know what might just like blow your mind. And that's the cool thing about music. Yeah. All right, well, let's uh, fast forward a little bit and uh, talk about your latest record, uh, Time and Trauma. Uh, it's currently peaking at the uh, 64th position on the Billboard charts. Yeah. Uh, I believe that's your highest peaking uh, album so far. Yep. Um, you guys have released several albums over the years. Um, I remember the very first time I ever heard of you guys was uh, about 10 or 12 years ago. Hot Topic used to carry this magazine called Amp. and. Yeah. Uh, they used to come with little sampler CDs okay. every time, and it had uh, blood work on right. there. And that was the very first time I'd ever heard uh, anything from you guys. And so now here we are, 10 or 12 years later, and you're releasing uh, Time and Trauma. To me, it's one of your heaviest records that you guys have ever done. Um, tell us a little bit about the writing process on this one and, and th just the story behind this album. Well, the content itself is he the heaviest that we've ever had, and I mean that in a life-affirming way. The, the entire record is about the passing of my mom in 2011, so uh, I just had a tremendous amount of material to write about while we started writing this album, and, you know, I never had gone through anything like that before, and it's uh, basically a story of, uh, you know, coping with loss and, and managing loss and figuring out a way to, you know, find... Uh, or, or not necessarily find positives, but turn tragedy into a fond memory. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the basis behind the album. Um, it was a difficult time in my life. My mom, even for the boys, I mean, my mom was, you know, our hugest supporter. Uh, you know, she never missed a show in Alaska. And, uh, you know, she just was very proud of what we had done. And so I was very close to my mom. And uh, I think it was a heavy blow to all of us, you know, and then shortly after my mom passed, my bass player, Mickey, his mom passed, 
So I think we both kind of went through that whole situation together, which I'm glad because we helped each other out through that. And uh, in turn, we wrote a record that, you know, to us, lyrically, it's the most important record I've ever written for myself personally. And, uh, and in turn, you know, the record has got to do, it's, got, it's had longer legs than any of our other albums, which that makes me very proud because it was a record about my mom, whom I love and miss dearly. And for us to have our most success on an album that was strictly about my life with her and, and then losing her as well. Um, you know, I, I feel a lot of joy about that. So um, it's great. Came out in February. Uh, we've been we've been out since November. Yeah. Like we've been literally on the road since November. We had a couple weeks off at Christmas, and then uh, when the record came out in February. We were in Europe early January uh, over there when it came out, and uh, we just been grinding. So we we did all these rad tours in the states this year. We did a uh, tour with Nonpoint into Five Finger Death Punch into in this moment and uh it's just been a really cool year of opportunity that we hadn't had prior yeah. and I'd, I'd like to you know attest that to our we got new management new label new booking agent new publicist so all the all the pieces were in place to really swing for the fences again and um so when you are at your 20th 20th year it's nice to have people yeah. that are ready to you know, kick ass with you. So, yep. It's, yeah, you guys uh, it's been have a good some year. great people in your corner. John over at John Freeman. Uh, Johnny Boy. And uh, Amy over at Adam Splitter. You know, Amy Girl. I, I get a lot of emails, especially when you guys were getting ready to put this record out, um, constantly promoting it. So you guys have got a lot of great people yep. in your corner. No question. We, uh, love, we love both of those guys, and they've been tremendous for us. This is the most press I've done on any album for sure. Yeah. And that was one thing too, though. When I when I listened to uh, Time and Trauma when it was first released, um, it was heavy, but it wasn't so much like underground like heavy that it was right. would only market to the underground yeah. scene like in the past albums. And obviously that's paid off because again you've been doing shows with Nonpoint and Five Finger Death Punch, and now with uh, in this moment. And so I think now with with this you know heaviest record that you guys have put out. It's going to take you guys up to the next level uh, to where you guys deserve to be at, especially yeah. going into 21 years. Thank you. Um, you guys have been going at it 21 years, road dogging it, baby. We're road dogs, for sure. <laughs> and uh, you've, you've paid your dues, so to speak. And, uh, you know, great things are to come with, it, with this record. All right, so a couple of quick uh, fun questions. These have been our summer questions. Uh, we've been with Warp Tour and a couple of other uh, different tours and things. Uh, one, what's the strangest things you've ever had to sign? Um, the strangest thing I've ever had to sign. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you sign a lot of boobs and things of that nature. That's not that strange, I guess. I'll give a little shout-out to the rock radio station back home, 106.5 K-Whale, to support our band for 20 years. Uh, they did a little spoof on me doing a commercial for brown underwear <laughs> basically to hide the the, the not so uh safe days apparently and i signed a pair of brown underwear for those guys and it's up in their studio uh, i don't really think they were originally brown i think that they like colored them just for the the bit so uh i can't really think of much weirder i mean i've done shoes but underwear, I think, might top it. Men's underwear, wow. by the way. It would have been better if it was, like, women's underwear. That would have been better. Absolutely it would have been. Absolutely. I don't really know if brown's the color you want to see, but... You definitely don't want to sign a pair of jeans, brown, underwear. And me neither. I did it. Not proud of it, but thanks, k -Well. All right, so last one, and this is a little fun one. Uh, she's been in the news recently because of... Her little pissy with Spotify music and now with Apple music. But okay. Taylor Swift has been a real hot idol. She is hot. Yeah, she's hot. I'm sorry, honey, if my wife decides to watch this <laughs> interview. But yeah, she's hot. And she's been in the music news recently with her little tissies with Spotify and now Apple music. But let's say for some strange reason, Taylor Swift come out and she said, she's been a closet metal fan. And she's like, Rock, I absolutely love your band. You guys started dating. You broke up. 
and she wrote a song about you on her next album. What would it be about? After we broke up? After you broke up. She can't write a song Damn. about somebody that she broke up with. Oh, is that right? Okay. Um. Damn. Are they are they out to be? Why does this man watch so much damn hockey? Uh, she might be getting upset about that. I'd like to note that uh, we're talking about him dating Taylor Swift and uh, Big. Call me. <laughs> Big's uh, call me Big Papa. Is, oh yeah, the soundtrack's really good right now. By the way, it's played in the background. So. Hi, boy, Biggie. Big ups. <laughs> Rest in peace, man. But uh, all right, so why do we, why does he watch so much hockey? Alright, well, this is uh, Josh with Southeast Sugar Report.com. This is Brock with 36 Crazy Kiss from Andrews, Alaska. Yes. And we are sweating our tails off here in Columbia, South Yes, we are. Farm. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. See ya.